lots of friends good morning from green acres uh, hotel elizabeth okberha so today i'm traveling to cape town so the free cape bus so i've checked in uh, i'm waiting for my bus so um i paid 550 rand I booked it online when I was still in Tanzania and uh, yeah I booked it through their website www.intergate.com yeah I think that is my bus now 923 
about 20 minutes into our journey we had our first stop uh, the weather had changed drastically and it was fog outside hey, i was afraid in how the driver will manage to see where we are going so we spent few minutes here until the weather started coming into normal ah! Hey. Hey. So we have just traveled uh, about uh, 20 minutes from uh, Port Elizabeth or the city of Beha and it is snowing, it is foggy and uh, the driver cannot see clearly. So. Yeah. Yeah, 15 minutes. Our bus. Oh, so there's a store here. There's two. The road from Port Elizabeth to Cape Town is called the Garden Road simply because of the vegetation along the way. There are forests, numerous estuaries, rivers and lakes dotted along the coast. There are also majestic mountain ranges. Um, this is a paradise for nature lovers and adventure seekers. The name Garden Road dates back to the early 20th century uh, when it was coined by a travel and a tourism official named Charles Marais due to its exceptional beauty flourishing vegetation that adorned the landscape he observed a distinct similarity to a well-tended garden hence the name the garden root
Welcome to Human's Dorp Town in Kogalo Municipality, Sarah Batman District, Eastern Cape Province. The town is estimated to have a population of 30,000 people. It's located 90 kilometers from Port Elizabeth and about 663 from Cape Town. Um, the group of people living here are black Africans, mostly Kosa, colored, and white. Traveling through the garden route, you will pass through Tsitsikama National Park. Um, this is the place where you can experience the outdoors, stunning marine life, and adventure-filled vacation. There are lots of activities such as diving, uh, snorkeling, kayaking, hiking, swimming, climbing, mountain biking, bungee jumping, etc um there are also a number of accommodation here available here so if you get time to visit eastern cape then this is one of the uh, uh tourist uh, spots for you to come visit and uh, yeah enjoy your experience
Eastern Cape now. We are done with the Eastern Cape province. especially outside South Africa, consider South Africa to be not a safe place. And well, it what? used to be, mm. you know, at certain places in South Africa. Cape Town has calmed down a lot with gangsterism. That was gang violence, right? Then there is the xenophobic attacks in KZN, um, the government issues that we are having, and most of the polit political issues that we're experiencing is based in Durban. So in Durban, ANC is there and we are getting bombarded with everything, like literally. They don't fetch our trash for a month, people get infected with pink eye. And you know what, it's not fair. It's not fair that they feel they deserve to get better treatment than the rest of us. There's a country full of South Africans, how many people, 8 million people in this country alone. And our government don't seem to make space for all of us. He's choosing his pockets than us, than his own people. So this is why we're going to vote for someone else this time yeah. and hope for something better. <laughs> now, which party are you voting now this time around? Voting DA. 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 Okay. <laughs> because the Western Cape, I can tell you this, hasn't been affected by any of this. Durban has broken roads, potholes, you name it. Uh, we haven't had um, this load shedding thing since since February. I'm not exactly sure why they're not giving us load shading, but I can tell you this. Once the load shading is back, we'll be living in the dark forever. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even experienced load shading. Yeah, of course uh, I haven't experienced it for this uh, two weeks that we just lived. Yeah, they haven't had. This, this, we go through, through a week, right, with at least four hours a day or six hours. It depends on what level. If they say it's stage four, that's four hours. Stage two is two hours with no electricity for a certain area. So that is stages, yeah. yes. hours per day. Stage six and stage eight is what they were expecting to happen during winter, but I have no idea. And then you have the floods. Don't forget 
Marshall Flats. Yes, in Durban. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, yeah. it's not even funny. People have mm. lost their lives. Sure, sure, Your, I saw that. And their homes. It was tragic. Yo, I was, you know, I was scared because I was alone at home and my kids were at different places, oh, okay. you know. And for me, that was very scary. Mm. My son was in Cape Town and he was at his friend's place and I'm alone at my house. Mm. And at the bottom of the building where I live, it was mm. flooded. Mm. Like, you know, I was very scared. Mm. Because I thought, oh my God, this building is going to collapse. Sure. You know? Sorry, sorry for that. But it now, mm. we try and help those people. Like, at the moment, yeah. I'm, I'm not just helping people who lost their homes. Okay. I'm a cancer survivor. Oh. So the last two, three years, yes. I was very sick. I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, stage four. I'm still yeah. surviving, okay. and I've started this little NPO business. It's called Butterflies of Hope, okay. where I take donations from others okay. to support cancer patients. People with cancer cannot mm. afford to work sure. or to afford to survive. Our medication over the counter okay. comes to like at least one seven or one eight. So spread the word, Butterflies of Hope needs the help. Uh, uh, we need the help so we can help people survive cancer, man. Uh, uh, That's the most so important thing. There are some people watching me and they are very touched by it. what you are doing. Where can they find you now? Oh, um, you can find me on Facebook, Lizelle Jansen. I'm on Facebook as the girl with the green eyes. I don't have green eyes. <laughs> But yeah, that's me. Um, Butterflies of Hope is also on Facebook. You're welcome to take a look. And you can find me on my TikTok page, Lizelle Jackson 212. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, friends, you have heard about that. And uh, I'm very touched by what uh, the sister is doing. An amazing job to help cancer survivors. So, if you have something to chip in or extra ideas to help, you can just uh, see her on your Facebook page and the TikTok as he say the end help donate something or uh, donate something so as she can continue this movement was 
Platen Bay is the primary town in the Baitulo municipality in the Western Cape um, province. It is a seaside town on the garden route. Uh, the town is estimated to have 30,000 people. For holiday and nature lovers, this is a paradise for you. There are a number of attractions such as Roberg National Reserve, uh, Tenikwa Wildlife Awareness Center, uh, Birds of Eden, Monkey Land Primate Sanctuary, uh, Longwood Long Snake Sanctuary, Elephant Sanctuary, and Crags, uh, Pettenberg Beach, and many, many others. So, just visit here and uh, enjoy. Bye bye, Platon, Platon Bay. These are the townships found in Naisna. Um, there is Mzini Township, Kayalethu Township, and others. The township in Naisna are estimated to have 40,000 people. Apart from South Africans, this township have people from Zimbabwe, Malawi, Congo, Nigeria, Bangladesh, etc. Um, these townships are a result of inequality that existed during apartheid regime in South Africa where the blacks had no economic means. They had to come to town centers to look for jobs. After securing the jobs, they had to start some informal settlement near the, uh, near the towns. So that's where these townships emerged up to now. Welcome to Nice. 
nice now. Welcome to Naisna town. This is one of the big towns in Western Cape province. The town is estimated to have 75,000 people. It is one of the tourist destinations on the garden route. A lot of attractions here such as Naisna Elephant Park, uh, Featherbed Nature Reserve, Garden Route National Park, Naisna Marine Life and Garden Route Coastline Experience, Nice na lagoon quiz and many others. Welcome to George. This is the second largest city in the Western Cape after Cape Town. This city is a popular holiday and a conference center as well as the administrative and the commercial hub and the headquarters of the Garden Route District Municipality. Uh, this is the halfway between Kebera and the Cape Town. There are a lot of things to do here like surfing uh, in Indian Ocean visiting Kango Caves, uh, Herod Wine, uh, Aut Autinika Farmers Market, Victoria Bay, Garden Route Botanical Garden, and uh, many, many others. Friends, welcome to Moselle Bay. This is the harbor town of about 
120 people along the garden road. Uh, it's an important tourism and a farming region of the Western Cape province. The town economy relies heavily on farming, fishing, commerce, and tourism. Uh, there are likewise a lot of attractions here, such as beautiful beachside, like Santos and the, da uh, and the Diaz uh, beaches, uh, Cape St. Blaise Lighthouse, where you can get a breathtaking view of the ocean, Janine Iron and Washing Museum, Bartholomew Diaz Museum Complex, uh, Reeds Valley, and uh, many, many others. So we are at Mosel Bay. 15 minutes. That's our bus. It's okay. It's not like food. Uh, oh, oh. So, okay, grab something here. Next customer, please. That is another bus.
welcome to Heldelberg, a small town in Western Cape province. It is located near South Africa's south coast on the N2 highway within Haseka region. <laughs> it's located 274 kilometers east of Cape Town. It is estimated to have 10,000 people. Agriculture is the major economic activity here. The town is surrounded by large-scale farms found here in Western Cape. Welcome to Swellendam Town, found in Swellendam local municipality here in the Western Cape province. This is a beautiful town filled with history, situated in the Overberg region of the Western Cape province of South Africa. Swellendam is said uh, to be the third oldest settlement in South Africa after Cape Town and Stellenbosch, and it's the gateway to the gated route. Uh, there are a lot of things to do here like visiting Bontenburg National Park, uh, Wine Valley Safari, a Drosdai Museum and others. The main economic activity here is agriculture and agro-processing of products such as fruits, wheat, barley, livestock, uh, young berry and grapes for exporting and they're making wines. Hello, the party is in the air, one of the robots on your Robertson Yeah, Robertson Western Cape, so Yeah, I think We are now near Cape Town So you can grab something there. Around, around 10 p.m. and uh, we are at Intercape office here in Cape Town. Yeah, so, friends, welcome to Cape Town. Welcome to so this is uh, 
interior office here in the town. So friends, I'm in Cape Town and luckily I've got a uh, Uber driver who is a Tanzanian. What a coincidence. So I'm going to talk to you about the story of the story of the story. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about Cape Town. I'm going to talk to you about the story of the story. I'm going to talk to you about the story of the story of Cape Town. I'm going to talk to you about the story of the story. Then, Kesho, Tanza, Kwangalia, Mjiko, Vipio. 